The silly season is in full swing, and although a couple of pieces have fallen into place, the biggest ones are yet to determine what kind of season we'll have from 2025 onwards. With Carlos Sainz forcefully thinking about a long-term project with either Audi or Williams, as well as Perez paradoxically getting interested in remaining in Red Bull, despite his downward trajectory, things are not turning out as expected a couple of weeks ago. So, with this in mind, which driver will end where, and how many rookies will we have from 2025 onwards? As of now, the hottest topic on the grid is Carlos Sainz, not just because he's sitting at one of the fastest cars on the grid currently and is without a seat for 2025, but also because of the development of events that have happened to the Spaniard. Although he had huge interest of signing a deal with Mercedes or Red Bull, it seems like both of these teams are now going to focus on other options, which leaves Sainz to consider a mid to long term partnership with Williams, or a contract with Sauber and a pair up with Hulkenberg. But an interesting turn of events happened in Red Bull, mostly because many believed Perez would be under a lot of scrutiny after his miserable performance in Monaco and the bad three-race stretch in which Red Bull struggled a lot. However, it seems that the Austrian team is now ready to continue the collaboration with Perez because he presents a low-risk, high-reward type of driver for them. If they were to bring Sainz, it would automatically mean one more enemy for Verstappen to battle which isn't a small thing considering how close Ferrari and McLaren are in 2024. What Red Bull needs right now is a no-risk type of driver next to the Dutchman, which Perez perfectly presents. And when it comes to Mercedes, Sainz's wishes couldn't be granted because he does not want to sign a contract that would guarantee only one year of driving. Be that as it may, the smooth operator has been linked to a sensational move to Williams, a team that was on a steady uprise from last year but failed to convert that form in 2024. And when talking about this scenario happening, Valls did not deny any talks happening behind closed curtains. As the team principal of Williams said, The truth behind all of Sainz's moves to Williams is that you're always talking to a number of drivers, and those are the sorts of chats that I always keep between individual groups rather than the public. If there's anything discussed, we'll make sure it comes out to the world pretty quickly. You'll see. Obviously, the performance of Sargent has been put under a lot of scrutiny, and even though Albon hasn't really exceeded expectations as well, he managed to score two points in Monaco and separate the team from Sauber, the last one to score points in 2024. Another important thing for the Grove Bay squad is to sign a driver who would be able to put Albon under a lot of pressure and extract more performance out of the Thai driver, which in this case would be Sainz, or even another experienced race winner like Bottas. It's highly unlikely that Williams would play the game of Mercedes and bring Antonelli for a couple of years before he leaves for Mercedes, which is why the destination of the young Italian driver is likely Mercedes from 2025 onwards. Still, it's still uncertain as to whether Wolf will be ready to pull the trigger on this move because he himself said that he doesn't want to overhype the F2 driver, as he has to develop his driving skills properly before he's considered a legitimate successor to Hamilton. Although, truth be told, Antonelli's tests with Mercedes in Austria and Italy have been nothing short of phenomenal, if we are to trust the words of James Allison. Valtteri is not high on the list of Sauber when it comes to continuing the collaboration, and with his future hanging in the air, he started to talk with other teams in the garage, with Williams likely being on top due to the close relationship he's had with James Valls during their Mercedes days. Obviously, if we're going to talk experience, then Valtteri is outpacing Sainz massively here with 10 race wins and numerous podium finishes for Mercedes, and with him being the ultimate number two driver that Mercedes could have asked for. It bodes well for his CV to return to Williams, the team in which he started his career. But the circumstances are much different now. He's no longer hungry for race wins and championships like he was back in the Mercedes days, and most of the time he'll be focused on returning the glory to Williams and potentially pushing them to the midfield. We've seen what happens when proper progress is being made behind closed doors, like the one in Racing Bulls. But then again, we see that you need two drivers in order to execute well and to be present in the midfield, something that the Italian squad is missing as well. With Bottas seen entering the Williams garage during the GP in Imola, he was immediately pushed to give more information about what could have been discussed, as he went on to say, It was normal things about life. Of course, when you're on the free market, you want to check around to see what's out there. It's a pretty normal situation when you're on the free market. There's a lot of tension and secrets being swirled left and right, and the fact that it's happening for the lower bracket teams goes to show that the sport of F1 never fails to amaze us. Everybody wants a piece of the cake, no matter the position they will be in from the next season onwards. But as much as this world is amazing, it does have its cruel sides, such as the future of Joe, 
While the Chinese driver has managed to exceed expectations in his rookie season and score points in his first race, something that not many drivers have achieved in their careers, he saw his downfall with Alfa Romeo and now kicks Sauber and is very unlikely to be considered a candidate next to Hulkenberg. To top that off, he's been outperformed by Bottas massively and is the only driver to outqualify his teammate in the 2024 seat, excluding sprint weekends along with Sergio Perez. This doesn't bode well for Zhou, but it seems like an interesting opening is waiting for him in Haas, the team that is on a steady uprise and is collecting points here and there patiently sitting at P7 in the Constructors' Championship and wanting to grab as much prize money as possible in order to develop their car and staff for the next season. With the departure of Hulkenberg as well as Magnussen's poor performance in the past couple of races, it's now evident that the American squad might be headed into the 2025 campaign with two new drivers, with Zhou being on the candidate list as well. But if he wants to be considered on a more realistic matter, he would definitely have to outshine Bottas as much as possible in 2024 which does seem like a Mission Impossible scenario given the fact that Kick Sauber are not in the best of form right now, and on top of that, they're unable to fix the issues and bring the car as close as sniffing the points finish. Apart from Zhou, Haas is now also looking towards another free agent from 2025 onwards, one that's highly dissatisfied with how everything is going down in Alpine, and that is Esteban Ocon. While it was certain a couple of months ago that he would be invested in the project of Alpine, the latest incident in Monaco, as well as Ocon's statement about having talks with other teams, goes to show that when it comes to the future of the driver, nothing can stand as an obstacle. And when talking about this, Ocon went on to say, It's an important year in my career and I want to do the best I can. I don't want any regrets at the end of the year. And there's going to be a lot of work on and outside the track. There are going to be chats with the team because I'm in my last year of my contract and they are now a lot more in my favour when we are negotiated back in 2019. I'm a race winner and a podium finish. We have a lot of arguments in my favour. But a heavy discussion will be led inside the Endstone Bay squad after the latest shenanigans from Ocon, who has managed to get team boss Bruno Famin extremely angry with the latest actions towards his teammate Gasly. All of this prompted an opening for Ocon to search for another environment, but the truth is that he's not really the most wanted asset when it comes to the driver's aspect, and while he does possess talent, the recklessness with which he races is definitely a red flag for the majority of teams, Mercedes included. Even though he is a protege of the Silver Arrows, they're not even thinking of bringing him next to Russell after what he did to Gasly. So all in all, the future of Ocon is either fixing the issues with Alpine or moving on in another chapter of his life in Haas. Here, we are very likely to see a driver that would technically not be a rookie due to the fact that he drove one race in Ferrari, and that is Oli Behrman. The 18-year-old Brit was amazing in the race in Jeddah, replacing Carlos Sainz, and the overtake that he managed to pull on his teammate in Monaco has left the majority of the F1 world in awe as to how well this youngster races. All of this has more or less guaranteed his seat in Haas, one that the team principal, Ayo Komatsu, said will depend a lot more on how it performs during the free practices than the F2 campaign, which is opposite of what Mercedes said about Kimi Antonelli. With all of this in mind, which of these transfers do you think will become a reality? And more importantly, do you think that it would be a good move for the drivers to change their environment after everything that has happened? Let us know in the comments below and once you do that, make sure to click on the video that's appearing on your screen right now.